Welcome to the Christian Foundry Podcast, where iron sharpens iron for the glory of God, the exaltation of Christ, and the edification of the saints. That's how you do it right there. That's how you do it. Is that how you do it? That's great. That's right. how you do it. Well, we want to win. <laughs> Karen and Karen. Three, two, one. Welcome to the Christian Foundry Podcast. I hope everybody's doing all right today. What is our topic today, guys? Uh, today we're going to be talking about songs. Music. 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 Worshiping through song, the proper way to do that. Yeah, we came through worship a couple of weeks ago, and we said that pretty soon we were going to talk about music and what that looks like in the church. So I think that uh, we've got a pretty good passage of scripture to start from. And uh, P. Paul, 98, yeah. Psalm yeah, 98. That comes from Psalm 98. It says, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody. With the trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the hills sing for joy together before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. So piano, organ, two old ladies. That's it, right? <laughs> yep, that's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Seems to be the tradition, yeah. And a song leader that does this. <laughs> oh, man. And they're always off, too. <laughs> they seem to be... Well, is it, first of all, if it's 4-4 four, four time, that's not... Is it correct. the song leader that's off or the people that are like, well, what is he doing, yeah. shaking his hand? Is he going to land a plane? <laughs> what what is this? <laughs> it's a combination, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Oh, but is there anything wrong with piano, organ, no. old no, ladies? No, and, no, not at all. No, that's fine. That's, yeah. If you're singing, uh, you're singing songs that are worshiping, you know, they're they're honoring to God, um, and they are as, as this says they're they're a joyful noise then mm -hmm. great go for it but that also doesn't mean that because we have drums and guitar in our church that we're doing something wrong right absolutely yeah. because uh, the lyre is a stringed instrument right yeah we should clarify that <laughs> yeah. Yeah. l i a r yeah that's l y r e lyre but we do sing with the lyres because we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory so but that's a different topic for a different topic another podcast so what would we say to people that say that you can't have instruments in church? That's a great question. What what You came out of a, a denomination that didn't have instruments, right? Yes, yes, I did. What was the big push there? What, why would they – I've heard a lot of people say because it doesn't carry into the New Testament. Yeah, they say uh, just because in uh, Colossians 3.16 and uh, Ephesians 5.19, there's no list of instruments there. It's just strictly singing. Well, I mean, that's, what, that's the verse I was looking at was 519. It says, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. I mean, the and portion there seems like that's a whole separate thing to singing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I believe that instruments make melodies, you know, if I remember school correctly and yeah. all my learnings. And then my argument to that is if we're singing psalms, what do the psalms say? Uh, mm -hmm. well, yeah, we just read just many of the psalms, are many of them <laughs> clashing symbols, all yeah. of those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these instruments. I it's, think in light of a couple of weeks ago in our worship episode, we talked about the regulative principle and the normative principle of mm -hmm. worship, and and I would say some would say, well, you're using the normative principle since the New Testament doesn't carry this idea over, and I would say this because we preach the whole counsel of God all 66 books of the Bible, and we should be able to go to the whole counsel of God to determine what we can do that is prescribed to us by his word. And we see in the Psalms, if we're singing Psalms, we go back. That was a great point. There are instruments there. Now, does that mean that if somebody doesn't have instruments in their church, they're wrong? No. 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 But if they're preaching a false gospel, that means they're wrong. Yes. But. Uh, if they ha don't have instruments, that's fine. If they have piano and organ, that's fine. If they have a, a band, that's fine. And uh, I know that we'll continue to talk through this and flesh this out and what that's going to look like from uh, the platform perspective. Uh, obviously, if you're producing a show, a concert, 
on Sunday morning on the Lord's Day, that's an issue. But instruments in and of themselves, I would say, are not sinful in the church. As long as the heart is in the proper place. Yeah, yeah, place. I was looking for the right word. You know, uh, you have to come from a place of reverence and wanting to bring attention and glory to God and not ourselves. Yeah, and I think that Psalm 98 touches on that without quote without directly touching on it in the fact that it starts the whole beginning of that passage started with all these things that the lord had done has done right and i think we really need to to remember that every time we go to make a joyful noise is, is there's verses one through three there um all the things that he's done his steadfast love faithfulness uh, you know his, his salvation all these marvelous things as it as it points out it starts off with that, and that should be the starting point every time we get up to sing a song in a church, is, is remembering and and remembering who it's for, yeah, who the audience is, yeah, it's that audience, audience one, one we've, we've talked about, talking about, yeah, he is the audience, and and if we don't uh, keep that perspective, then we start to worry about things like, well, is the music, uh, you know, does it sound perfect? Is can we get a better? Uh, bass player up there can we get a better this a better that and then we st- it starts becoming music? a production yeah what's the the more popular music yeah. maybe we uh you know sing faster songs slower songs whatever it is we're worried about the production value of it mm-hmm. you know and then the smoke machines come out and then we got a real problem right well all of that is is to produce emotional experience a lot yeah um Experiential worship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I thought the problem you were talking about was the fire marshal. Well, <laughs> the smoke machines. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can tell you too, Justin, that's a good point. But even in our context here where we don't have smoke machines and fog machines and all well, the same thing, uh, lasers and all those things, uh, I have found myself uh, really concerned about the style or are the songs too slow? Are they not good enough? Are they, you know, are the people getting bored? You know, I've even thought, are people getting bored? Are they not going to come back because the music is not what they like or it's too boring? But I should, and I have, that kind of thinking should be repented of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. Right? Because as we said, as, as, as Ryan said, it's the heart yeah. should be in the right place from a, from a place of reverence and awe and, and just giving back to God. And I'll, I'll use a $10 sentence here. Is our theology, and it was just kind of piggybacking off what you said, our theology should push us to doxology. And that simply means what God is, who God is, the theology we have, and, and the study of God, and who we know Him to be, and all that He has done should drive us to worship. Yeah. It should drive us to worship. And we talked about what worship is a couple of weeks ago, and now specifically we're honing in on the music part. So if we're going to shape our singing in our music off of our theology then the songs that we sing must be biblical Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and we mentioned a couple of weeks ago also that there are many songs out there that come from places that have really bad theology Mm -hmm. right so what do we do with those songs some of the songs could be spot on theologically, yeah, but that's that's the hard part is because there are a lot of songs that, that have a good message and they, they, they have good text and everything. But in our case, what we do and what we're concerned about is people looking up that song and, and then the YouTube auto scroll takes them to uh, another song, maybe from that church that's not so theologically sound and but very then, catchy. Or into the the preaching, hey, let me see, you know, oh, this is a sermon. Wow, this guy's easy to listen to. Um, And then someone sits there and gets a huge dose of bad theology based on, you know, following the rabbit down the hole of that song. And and so we just don't sing those songs. We we do our best to avoid that. If we find out one is attached to a, a place that's not theologically sound we take it out and we've done that literally last second Mm -hmm. uh, within uh within two minutes of the beginning of a church service before because we we, delayed we had that delayed starting yeah we we were a few minutes late getting going that that sunday and and we're not perfect we may miss one here and there but for the most part we're we do spend a lot of time Mm -hmm. looking at these songs and I, i think one way that we know 
if a song is going to be, you know, theologically sound, is is it singing back this? Is it singing uh, word for word the Bible some in some cases, or is it singing at the, at the very least solid biblical concepts back? You know, and it, it's really they jump out when they don't anymore. Yeah, but what do you do with those that, let's just say, elevation and worship, for instance, from Elevation Church, Stephen Furtick. What if you have one that's actually pretty solid biblically, right? And, and it's you can go to the scriptures and find the principles or the words themselves in the Bible. Should you sing those on the Lord's Day in your worship gatherings if they come from Stephen Furtick's church? Hmm. And for those that don't know, Stephen Furtick is not a true biblical teacher. There is a lot of heresy. There is a lot of absolutely. Um, yeah, we probably need to do a whole another podcast yeah, on that as well. We, we will we, because because, because he's one that's easy to listen to. He's very easy to right? listen to, and and boy, it sure makes me feel good about being right. me if you listen to him. And he's cool. Yeah, yeah. he skips leg unquote. day. <laughs> <laughs> upside down pineapple pear. I mean pear. Upside down pear. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that may be wrong, and if it is, I repent right now. I shouldn't talk about somebody like I, that. I don't think, well, because I look pretty funny too to most people. I'm sure. Yeah, I, I, I like it, too. especially I little kids. That, <laughs> look like Harry and the Hendersons. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back on track here. Movie. Yeah, uh, uh, that's the thing. We shouldn't worry about looking cool. That's and right. Being cool. That's, that's right. not what that's about. That position is not to be cool. That's good. Because As a matter of fact, you're going to be really uncool to a lot of people if yeah, you say the absolutely. truth. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So a lot of these songs, somebody said, would you say emotional driven or yeah. Ryan, Ryan, one yeah, of y'all yeah. two said emotional that emotional driven, yeah. even the songs themselves can be emotional driven. So also some of the old hymns and some of the, the truth, the songs of truth from the word, like, uh, what's the, what's the song Martin Luther wrote? Uh, uh, mighty bulwark never fade. Oh, uh, uh, a, a mighty fortress, fortress. is our God. Yeah, a mighty fortress is our God. You th- you, you take that. That's, that's a, a mouthful di- to that's sing. That's a difficult song to sing. Yeah, it I really didn't know is. You wrote it, so that I just learned something. Yeah, yeah, but but the words in it are like, wow, these this is good. And yeah. and, and 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 on the other hand, you've got the where it's just kind of like bringing in this emotion. And you're just like almost in capturing everything that. You're just in the moment. You right? just did the Twilight Zone thing. <laughs> did I? Yeah. That's, that's well, I was, that's clearly what you did. I was thinking about guitars kind of just, and then the pad, the synthesizer thing. Yeah. And then, you know, it just prepares you. It brings you in this emotional place. And then instead of pulling at your emotions, it, you should be singing, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Yeah. Right, because our emotional needs start to 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 overpower and take over us, and we feel like we need more to help us when we really need to just empty ourselves and sing back to God the truth of His Word. Absolutely. Right. So, but here's the question again: When it comes from sources that are heretical or or their theology's off, should we sing it in our churches on the Lord's Day? Now, this is different from singing in the shower, singing in your car, etc. We're specifically talking about on the Lord's Day on Sunday morning. Yeah. And so, I, do you think there's a difference? Like, we shouldn't sing it at church, but we can sing it in the shower and sing it at home? Well, I think there's, t- t- for me, there's a level of spiritual maturity there. So, yeah. um, one of my favorite songs several years ago was uh, Give Me Faith by Elevation Worship. And really, when I look back on that, it was just kind of a just a cool little melody. And, mm-hmm. you know, you could just sing it, and it's it's fun to sing. And that's that's the bad part. If you start singing songs because they're fun to sing, yeah, then you've missed the you mark. Missed the point. So right. I would I would say that if you go back and listen to some things and sing some things in the shower or on your way to work or whatever, or if you're listening to K Love's Top Forty, then I think you need to have a level of spiritual maturity to understand and know. You know what? This is Jesus. Cult- really, if I hear a Jesus culture song or anything of Bethel, I'm turning it off immediately because I think they're way far out there, worse than Elevation Worship, in my opinion, with Kundalini worship and grave sucking and all that stuff. It's crazy. Uh, so I'm not going to listen to anything of they of them. Uh, but then, I mean, we can bring it home to Jonesboro's boy, right? Zach Williams, and I know people are going to be like, "Don't mess with my boy," you know. <laughs> I did, you know, there's stories from folks with Zach Williams here in this, this, this Northeast Arkansas region that they've partied with Zach Williams before he was a Christian and you knew him. 
Yeah. Right? He's a dear friend of mine. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not going to, I'm not saying he's not a Christian, but some of his songs are like, ah, we're probably not going to sing that on the Lord's Day. Right? But you can sing it in the shower, on the way to work, whatever. Right? Just because some of those aren't yeah. built well, for corporate worship. And I mean, just to be honest, we don't have an old church choir singing in our soul. Right, we can't find that in the scriptures, and and again, I know I'm probably like on blast right now for anybody listening because I've messed with Zach Williams, Jonesboro's boy. The thoughts that are being repeated are not associated with the other members. Of <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and y'all may no, not, y'all may disagree with me, but I, I think what Zach Williams has done is great. I think that he could be a light and share the gospel and do many great things. But there's a lot of his songs that I don't think we could incorporate in in the Lord's Day, and it's not because he's heretical. Right? There's just a, a way that we sing. Well, the, the songs that we sing on the Lord's Day, the, the songs that we sing corporately in worship, um, we've, we have to protect exactly what we're doing there and, and yeah. make sure they have a purpose, right? They have, a, they have their place. A song, just a, a fun, easier to sing song that, that we enjoy that has good, good meaning, uh, you know, a good positive message and all that, that's fine. But that's not the purpose of singing in church. The purpose is worship. And that goes back to the other podcast that we did, you know, what is true worship. And, and I'm, I'm afraid that, that singing these um, just everyday songs, I'll call them. I, I don't have a, a good name for them, but, you know, singing just an, everyday, an everyday song like that. I think that. they call them 711 songs. I'm not like seven, mel- seven beats or it says seven times. Ta- Somebody look up Seven Eleven songs and tell tell exactly what it is. Like the gas station, <laughs> not the gas no. station. And Just I didn't mean, it, I didn't mean quick, to interrupt you. But yeah. yeah, those those are great for for every day. But but when we get into corporate worship, we need to be very careful what we sing. And honestly, there you know, we probably need <laughs> yeah, to don't go look through, up Seven Eleven songs. <laughs> we probably need to go into our hymn book, and there's probably some in there that yeah, you know, not really. They're not really as good as others yeah uh, you know there are several that are just strictly you know singing back a song i mean how better to worship god than sing his word exactly, right back yeah. to him that's true. that's a command you know to yeah. sing yes yeah. hymns okay here psalms and spiritual songs, songs. mention 7-eleven is that what we're talking about no, no. no. you're talking it's about a, it's a certain song structure it's a, yeah, yeah, it's a song structure about, yeah but the, there is a song called 7-eleven by beyonce don't singing don't, the, don't, don't yeah no, not yeah. beyonce singing the same seven words 11, 11 times. times yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought oh i've never heard of that right, that's yeah. interesting so you basically let fire fall let fire fall yeah. or whatever and i'm like whoo be careful when you sing anything about fire because 90 percent of the time in the judgment. bible yeah. it's judgment yeah. so that's another thing it comes out of these places they don't know their bible right let your fire fall like you know when this earth is destroyed it's going to be destroyed by fire so i'm like yeah. you know what let's just sing back the glory of god because i think that let's exalt and worship his holy mountain for the, the fire's Lord. coming god in no time just, yeah i mean yeah. like you were saying you know let the fire fall they're referencing a whole scripture they're taking out of context right. with that statement yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Is that where they want to burn for the Lord and all that good stuff? Yeah. It's referencing yeah. Acts 2, I believe, when the Holy Spirit came and it was... Oh, uh, they're referencing Pentecost? Yes. Okay. I didn't know that they are referencing Pentecost. That's I what I kind of gathered, but... Yeah. If that's the case, then the fire has already fell. Yeah, say, <laughs> the Holy Spirit indwells every believer. So, um, we are all men sitting at this table. How many of us have kids? Well, yep. Me and you? That's it? Wow. Yeah. I got to so know. Half the weird. table's unmarried. Wow. Yeah, you got two unmarried and three unmarried. Three unmarried. Three. Un- oh. Wow. Three yeah. si- ladies. <laughs> <laughs> People ain't getting no younger. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting him a gold oh, chain for his wow. birthday. Yeah, definitely. Wow. <laughs> Single guys, raise your hands. Joe, put it on the big camera so everybody right knows. Okay. There's, there's our single guys. Uh, Anyway, what I was saying is, as men, we are called to lead our families and to teach them the depths of God's word. So we're also, many of us, if not all of us, all of us in here are leaders in this church in some way, shape, or form. We teach, we we sing, we do something. Mm -hmm. Actually, all of you are teachers. Uh, So we are required and called to teach the depths of God's word. And I think that we can't disconnect that from our singing. Mm 
No. We, oh, no. We have yeah. to carry that deep, rich riches of God's word into the singing portion of our worship gathering so that we can sing back the deep truths of his word to him. And, and when I say deep, I'm not meaning let's repeat the same seven line 11 times. I mean, let's sing a mighty bull work never fading. Let's yeah. sing depth. Well, and, and you just kind of hit a little point there, but why do we, why do we sing songs with children? Because they're such a good teaching tool. Absolutely. Yeah. And we got to remember that for ourselves, too. If we mm-hmm. sing good biblical songs that are right out of the Bible itself, we're learning while we're doing that. We're, we may not realize it as much, because, but we're singing these strings of words that have meaning behind them, and, and it really can help us to... Um, to be able to quote scripture better yeah. there's uh, you know yeah when i was going through my early theological training uh with the guy that taught me the basis of theology we would when we would drive around and go do errands and stuff we would listen to music-based catechisms like we would listen to catechisms in the form of music and it helped me learn just the basic yeah. understanding. and the funny thing is these were catechism songs for children that we were listening yeah. to and, yeah. Bill, and bill the guy that i was going with he was bobbing his head rocking out <laughs> like you could tell he was enjoying it. i was having fun i was listening to it I was real learning. quick there may be some folks that don't know the, the five dollar word catechism what is catechism they are i don't know the definition q and a from the bible questions and answers that's a good, that's yeah. good point they're, they're q and a from the bible they're they're, they're it's a Q&A from the bible short um but very helpful. specific yeah. and very helpful um phrases and, and things where we've we've asked a question um what is the chief end yep. of man i think it's one of the more to common glorify first God, ones. enjoy Him forever. Glorify God, enjoy Him forever. It's a question with an answer, very yep. simple. And and there are yeah, all these catechisms set to music. Mm-hmm. I, there's a reason that we sing. We have those for kids. It's because you learn them yeah. quickly. And, and there's easily. a reason that your brain ties people that can together. say words, a specific word or phrase, and it immediately elicits trigger of music. Like there's a reason yeah. why this song "Let It Go" from Frozen is so popular because the phrase "Let It Go" is common used it's a common used phrase everyone uses it that's why it became so popular let so it go viral. might be common over at joe's place but uh i have a, I have a niece i have a niece who is two years old and she loves frozen so i've the exact opposite is common in my house it's hang on hang on i'll take out the trash later hang on i'll leave the dishes soon you don't utter the words let it go i never thought we'd get to frozen on this yeah, well, podcast. music. Who hey, knows where music. we're going to go here? That's true. Um, <laughs> music is teaching us something. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and that's what I was going to say is as a pastor, people are going to remember the music we sing. I heard Ligon Duncan say this several years ago. People are going to remember the music we sing, and they sing way sooner and better and easier than they will remember what I preached on today. Yeah. Right? Because mm-hmm. people are going to leave. I remember when uh, Travis – first brought out by your grace people were humming that song for weeks and then they learned the words they started singing that song and now it's one of our favorite songs here because as we mentioned a couple weeks ago he he wrote it from the scriptures themselves Mm -hmm. ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 through 10 specifically but people are you're they're very teachable and they learn much better Mm -hmm. i think when it's incredible how our brain will tie a melody and, and and lock something in that if I, I could spend two weeks trying to remember a phrase, you know, but but you put it to a melody and I'll remember it the next day. Yeah. Like, boom, I got it. Yeah. And I think that's why catechisms work too, because yeah. they're just so rhythmic in the way they mm-hmm. are worded. That's another thing. Yeah. And and that's a good thing. Um Shaolin has a kid's catechism. Is that what y'all were bobbing your heads to? Or is Sha Lin's <laughs> yeah. new? Been... No, probably not. Bill's not much into rap. Okay. Well, Sha Lin's got a good one. My daughter loves it. She's five, and she wants to hear uh, the catechism songs and, yeah. and all that. It's it's a good tool uh, because it's teaching the depths of God's Word. Yeah. And that's what we should be doing. So let's let's circle this thing back here. Well, one of those songs from you know Hillsong Church might be biblical and be teaching the truth of God's Word. Well, I would say this. Number one, it is you are going to run the risk of getting back into this heretical teaching, but here's something else we haven't thought about. When we download these songs or playing them, we're supporting yep. that ministry, and we're not only doing it from uh, the the stage or the platform, so to speak, but if we're downloading that material, we're supporting that that place financially. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to go support the Ku Klux Klan. 
yeah. with my money, right? So why would I want to support a ministry that is so unbiblical in all the things that they teach? I mean, word of faith heresies. I mean, you just look up some of these things, and we'll, we can talk through each one of these at some point. But when they are specifically outside of orthodoxy, meaning they're outside of biblical Christianity, uh, they are far away from the Bible as you can get, then I don't understand. You know, they say a broken clock's right twice a day. Yeah. Uh, every now and then you can get some right songs come through these ministries. Yeah, you but get, you get a diamond in the rough. You get a diamond in the rough every now and then, but that doesn't mean we sing the diamond in the rough just because they got one out of five right. Yeah. 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 Right? Because we're still supporting these ministries that are wrong because you're supporting something you disagree with at that point yeah and disagreeing theologically yes yeah and i want i also want to bring back something you said earlier is we want to sing songs that are and i'm paraphrasing now that are in line with what we believe Mm -hmm. and i would say that i would like to add just to that yes and amen but i would also say that we're not talking about secondary doctrines and tertiary doctrines like that's a good point churches that that don't believe what we believe in the secondary and tertiary doctrines that's not what we're talking about here we're talking about primary. churches outside of the primary doctrines of scripture that we believe we're yeah. talking about hills to die on yeah. Yeah. yeah hills to die on and and and, and there are some not hill song but hills there to are die. there are some churches there are some churches that are are biblical that would say, well, it's it's just a song. We're not supporting the ministry. People, the likelihood of people getting back to these ministries and listening to the teaching is very low. Wrong, mm, wrong. Yeah, because yeah, we disagree with that. Because I, it, to me, if it's one person, if one yeah. person goes down that yeah. road, I've been that person, and, and mm. so I feel like that's my fault because I didn't stop that from occurring on that stage on that platform, and then I I feel like I failed in ministering to that person because they've gone down that, that hole. Yeah. And most of those songs, and, and when I say every now and then they have a biblical song, it's, it's generally I, yes, I, I, yeah. right. We, me, it, you know, it's the focus is on us, what we need when really we need to focus on who God is, ascribe him worth. And when we say, we, when we sing the words, I, I think of, I once was lost in darkest night. You thought I knew the way, and it shows, all, or that all I, I have is Christ. It yeah. shows how yeah. depraved we I are. bow down. Yeah. I, Even know, in that, yeah. the, the one you sang just a second ago, that shows the folly of man. I once was lost in darkness night and thought I knew the way. Yeah. Like, we don't know. There's a contrast in there that really points to what we're supposed to be thinking about. Yeah. Yeah. Like, go ahead. No, you go. Okay. Like we had talked about in uh, episode three, you know, we should talk about how terrible we are but yet how glorious he is that's exactly right absolutely and and a lot of the songs that come from these places even the biblical ones just scratch the surface of Mm -hmm. of biblical worship true biblical doctrine uh they never go deep yeah now you get into some of i mean think about come thou fount yes that's i mean prone to wander lord i feel it you know that the god i love yeah i mean take my heart Seal take, it, take and seal it. Yeah, I mean for that chords. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's real. It's raw. like I am prone to wander, but praise God for His love yeah. and kindness. And these are grace. all these are all praising Him, worshiping Him, yeah. and they're yeah. doing they're doing what Colossians three says and and sixteen says. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, and that's important, right? Okay, yeah. we're going to start there, um, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom. Singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. There's there's the key, right? We're doing these things. Why? Well, because we have the thankfulness in our hearts. And what are they doing? Well, they're teaching us and admonishing one another with with even this music. Um, and you know we we've, we've got to keep. And you can carry that on into verse seventeen. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. And that's the whole purpose of the songs that we sing when we gather mm-hmm. corporately yeah um, they're not they aren't what god can do for me they aren't what i can do for god it's what they has done what god has done exactly yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. putting so. putting both man and god in their proper places a low view of man because we are lowly sheep who go astray but putting god in his proper place as mm-hmm. god almighty a thrice holy god yeah you have the internet. 
Yeah, I got the internet. Look up, waves. look up. Just for while we're continuing to talk, look up the number one song on K Love this week. When you find it, look up the lyrics, and then we'll compare an old hymn to lyrics which that hymn? are in the top. Which hymn are we going to do? Well, I got "Be Thou My Vision" pulled up right now. Oh, that was a good one. Um, Love that one. But also, I think it's worth mentioning. So we we've talked about. So let me just say this: Hillsong United, Hillsong Worship, anything Hillsong, anything Elevation, Can Jesus we- Culture. Bethel music, there are no for us here because those places do not teach biblical truth as we know it from the scriptures. So I'm just, I just want to throw that out there. But also, somebody would say, well, what about hymns? Hymns are great, and we'll see this one here in just a minute. But also, there are some hymns that There's you need to stay away from yeah. because they're not biblical either. Yeah, yeah. Like I know um, when uh, Ben Stokes led the, mu- the songs last time, you know, he took out a verse just because he didn't really agree with that certain theology in that song. Yeah. yeah. I've We've had a conversation with Travis. Travis, There's a, a hymn, and I don't remember which one it was, but there's a specific part of the hymn that's like foundational to that hymn that he doesn't sing it because he disagreed with it. I don't know if that's changed. That was years ago. I remember that conversation being had. I just don't remember what hymn it is. Do you want the top song now? What is it? What is it? The top song is Relate by King and Country. Would you like me to read some of the lyrics? Yes. Okay. Has life hit you so hard that you've been knocked down? Have you gone too far to find the middle ground? Did they raise you so high just to pull you back down? Have you been so lost you could never be found? And then I'm guessing this is the chorus. It doesn't say, because I've never heard this song. Because I've been real. I've been fake. Been a sinner, been a saint. I've been right. I've been so, so wrong. Yeah, I've made mistakes. Made my mistakes. <clears throat> me, 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 me. No. Now, I, I, I kind of peruse through the lyrics. We don't get to uh, Big G God until the little end. And even then, it seems pretty superficial. Read it. I don't know what it's like to be you. You don't know what it's like to be me. Oof. Oof. But by the grace, hold on. Hold, whoa, whoa, hold on. Let, let me let, let me let finish this because this gets worse. But by the grace of God, we'll see each other's heart. Can you can you relate? Uh, no, no, I no, can't no, relate. Hold on. No, where in the Bible is he this singing? Like, can can we okay. relate to? Okay. Can we relate to each other? The like, you, you and to that me? was you and me, not you, yeah, God. Right. Okay, yeah. That, yeah. Right. No, first I thought. Hold on. The, the relate is: Can you relate to my circumstances? Yeah. Like, I, can, oh, okay. I see. You, I see what I you're following. You, yeah. Okay. You, yeah. No, 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 no. Not not that kind of heresy, but <laughs> but still, um, still the fact that it's me, so we're me, singing me, to each other, we're not yeah, to God. Yeah, right. exactly. It's me, 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 me. Can you relate to me? Can you relate to me and what I've done? But the one time we get Big G God is, but by the grace of God, we'll see each other's heart. So, so where in the Bible did it say that yeah. I'm going to be able to tell your innermost thoughts and feelings? But God can. Mm. Where, where does it say that? So there's, it doesn't. Here's here's where we we strike out, right? Me, 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 me. It's it's yeah. very right. it's very me centered. Uh, number two, it doesn't. Where's where's glorifying God? Where is it? Nowhere. Right. It's a bunch of earthly circumstances, and we're yeah. all boohooing and having a pity party together. Is really what so it what seems it is, like. So what you're telling me is it's yes. eliciting an emotion. It's bringing out an emotional response. Yeah. yeah. And past tense, been a saint. Are you not trying yeah, to be that. one currently? Well, or yeah. are you not trying to? They've been a saint, but they aren't anymore, so losing salvation. See, somebody could take that from that. Yeah, if, yeah. If they're, you're right. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But then a lot of people are going to be like, oh, y'all are looking too deep into this. Well, we are supposed we to do that. We, we, we must. To, we must. Yeah, and as, everybody listening must look deep into these songs yeah. and lyrics to know exactly what they're singing because but, that could really mess somebody up. Well, it's just but, like the Bible, right? You can superficially look at the Bible and you'll get something out of it. It's milk. But if you want the meat, you have to dig into the Bible. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is the same way with these songs and the lyrics. But even more so, we have... Out of the the six people at this table, we have two elders. We have two leaders of our church, like the actual elders of our church here. It is up to y'all to guide the sheep to do so or in every way, shape, and form. If that means cutting songs like this, absolutely do it. Because y'all will be accounted for, like y'all have a harsher judgment. Scripture tells us this, that teachers and leaders will have a harsher judgment. This comes with that. This comes with that because... It is y'all's job to shepherd and that's, lead us. That's, that's where I uh, earlier was talking about that I'm I'm terrified of 
uh, of one person going down that path. Because then that one because can I know turn that, into many. Yeah, the one can turn into many. But even even if it's just the one, one I know yeah. I know how I'm going to be judged yeah. over that. I know how Stephen's going to be judged over that. It is our job to stop that from happening. And if we don't take active steps doing that, well, we have we have really done a disservice mm-hmm. to this church. You know, here's a test for this song. If you heard this song on a secular station, would you go, "Oh, that's a nice Christian song they're playing on the secular station," or would you just be like, well, "Same stuff"? Yeah, yeah, it sounds to me like it'd be the same stuff. I mean, that reads like tell. a pop song to me. Yeah. yeah. Or any other boohoo country song I've heard lately. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> country. Yeah. Uh, well, listen to this. And, and while I'm reading these lyrics, look up the lyrics to All I Have is Christ by Sovereign Grace Music. This is an old hymn, Be Thou My Vision. And there is some mys and, and stuff in here, but listen to the difference. Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of My Heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought, by day or by night, waking or sleeping, thy presence my light. Mm. Be thou my wisdom, uh, thou my true word. I ever with thee, and thou with me, Lord. Thou my great father, and I thy true son. Thou in me dwelling, and I with thee one. Riches I heed not, nor vain empty praise. Thou mine inheritance now and always. Thou and thou only, first in my heart. It's so hard not to sing this. Yeah. <laughs> High King of heaven, my treasure thou art. High King of heaven, my victory won. May I reach heaven's joys, O bright heaven's sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O ruler of all. Even in the me's, it's God-centered. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, and you're this is to be your wisdom. Yeah. Your vision, your vision, your wisdom. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, there's a lot of the, there's a lot of these and thous in there, and it takes a minute to to actually look at that song and read it and get the depth of it because a lot of times you know that's not how we talk. Yeah, I get that. But read the song, you yeah. know, as as you're singing it, and and put into our words if you want to. When you do that, when you say you know, when you realize what that song is saying, it is a deep, rich song, mm-hmm. and it praises and honors God. Yeah. <laughs> you all right? You yeah, make it? Okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to read these lyrics now? Yeah, so this is a, a modern song. So you're not going to probably hear this on K-Love, and I don't know why. Because it's, yeah. um, it's a great song. Great song. So, I mean, it starts out, Hallelujah, all I have is Christ. Hallelujah, Jesus is my life. That's a pretty good opener right there. Yes, it is. I once was lost in darkest night, yet though thought I knew the way, the sin that promised joy in life had led me to the grave. I had no hope that you would own a rebel to your will, and if you had not loved me first, I would refuse you still. Ooh. That, that's that's that, theologically deep. Yeah, yeah, that in itself puts man in, in our proper context of who we are yeah. before you God. You did this. Yeah, this yeah. is where you are. That, this is before God came to your life, this is yeah. you. And if you had not loved me first, I would refuse you still. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the suppression that well, they talk look, about in Romans. Well, that, and let's just do a, a quick little uh, Ephesians too. That, I'm going to go to Romans chapter 3. Uh, none is righteous, no, not one, starting in verse 10. No one understands, and read that line again. If you had not loved me first. And if you had not loved me first, I would refuse you still. Verse 11, no one seeks for God. Mm-hmm. It would be, we'd still refuse him. We'd suppress the truth. We'd run from God. We're at war with God. No one seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. No. So we would continue to run the opposite direction of God, the Bible, the, the church, we would have nothing for it. Yeah. So while it's not quoting word for word that scripture, it's definitely got the concept Absolutely. Yeah, solid. The, in these the, theological in, concepts yeah. are mm-hmm. definitely in there. Yeah, and that's what we're saying. You don't have to quote it word for word, but it better. It better source compliment. material yeah. better be the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. That I is mean, a good song. I mean, I guess we can go back to the relate song and say that the Bible tells us to confess our sins one to another, to forgive one another. But still, but, but that but that song is not saying, uh, "Oh, I'm confessing my sin to you." It's uh, don't judge me for my sin. You, can, but true. can but can you relate to what I've done? What I've done? 
Can you relate to what? Can you I'm relate at? instead of can you tell me that I'm doing something wrong yeah. and hold me accountable? Yeah, it's, it's oh, like have, oh. no, it's have sympathy for me. Yeah, because I've done these things, but just have sympathy for my life. I've missed a part. Hold on. Oh wait, he Hold missed on. a part. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Back it up. Oh. Back it up, Terry. <laughs> we both know what it's like to be hurt. We both know what it's like to feel pain. They repeat that a few times. But I think it's safe to say we're on to better days. Why? How, Why how are you, you on to better days? How do you have the assurance of that? What happened? Like, I, I don't see it in what the better days. Yeah, so we'll go into days. we'll go into detail on all these other things, but then we won't we won't dive into that part. I think I think that's a good place to point out that our testimonies, our uh, you know, our struggles in life. Those things are very important, but they are not the gospel. Amen, Absolutely. brother. So that's I think that's where the shift needs to come in in a song that kind of lays out their struggles. And yes, I can relate to you, but you know, we need to ask the question: Why are there better days ahead? You yeah. know, we need to answer that question and it needs to be addressed there. You know, people turn on the radio and crank it up just because it's on the radio. They think they're running to the Lord, you know, and, yeah. um, I, you know, I was that guy, <laughs> uh, quite frankly, I was, and I find myself sometimes scrolling through the radio and if I'm not looking at the screen, I don't know who it is right off, you know, top of my head catchy tune I'm like man that's that's a good little song there and then i'll look at the screen i'll see who it is and i'm like time to turn it. <laughs> you know but then you start actually listening to the song and go, oh well but it yeah. comes back down to we're in a culture where, where people just don't know their bibles and you know are, are we perfect at it no do we know it all no but we know some some solid scriptural truths that throw up those red flags when we hear it on the radio. You know, just because it's on K Love or Air One or whatever doesn't mean that it's biblical. And that's that's tough to say and people don't want to hear that. Absolutely. We're in a culture that people just they want their feelings just petted and you know, and their ears tickled. And yeah. that music, it, it drives emotion. It does. And I've been there. <laughs> I've been there. But I'd much rather listen to a song that, that really spells out and makes me realize who I am in light of who God is. You know? Can't you find a much deeper worship there when you realize that yeah. you're a wretched sinner? Well, and that- I think I think Matt said it a while ago, or maybe Joe, um, just putting everybody in their proper place, you know, putting us in our proper place and God in his proper place. We don't put him in his proper place, but you know, I mean, he, he is viewing him. We view him. We view him. We don't put him in his proper place, but we can for sure take him out of his proper place in our minds. Yeah. Like in our the minds, view, yeah. Because we can definitely, because high view of God, low view of man, mm-hmm. these songs bridge that gap and bring it a lower view of God and a higher view of man. It gets really dangerous. And we're not trying to paint a picture that that we're holier than thou no. or, or so perfect or anything we, like that. So please don't misunderstand that at all because we are – I mean, I think we've pretty well confessed here that we are all wretched sinners. Yeah. And, we've, and, you we've know, we confess that we've gotten it wrong a few times yeah. where we've had to make changes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We don't yeah. get it right 100% of the time. And specifically, we're dealing with songs that we sing corporately. You know, yeah. to, to take it back to where we started this thing is the, the you know these are not songs we're going to sing. Uh, I'm pointing yeah. that way, but uh, I guess most people can't see the studio where it's at. <laughs> and, but, the, but the chapel oh, right over here is that way. Yeah. Anyway, man, yeah. Obviously, yeah, de- definitely don't want to think that we're trying to be holier than now at all. Um, which makes me think I had two thoughts while both of you were talking. First, you said people run to, you know, K love when they're feeling down or blue and they're wanting something, uh, the air one radio, whatever that just proves the need for people to be in a biblical church Yeah, because they need to be able to run 
to understand, number one, to run to the scriptures, to run to the Lord in prayer, to run to the elders of the church yeah. when they're feeling down, blue, emotional, whatever the case may be, instead of running to a very watered down gospel that you'll find on on K Love or any of the songs. Yeah, there's some encouraging things on there, but uh, the Bible teaches us to be a whole lot more than just encouraging yeah. to one another. And in a lot of those songs, you won't hear the gospel. Yeah, mm-hmm. True. that's right. You're right. Uh, we didn't hear it in that one. No. Yeah. So I've seen those guys. I have. I've seen I, them in concert. I, I a, very, very talented musicians. Yeah, they are. I've I, seen I, them too. You know, I believe they're brothers in Christ, but, you know. Yeah. Sing it. Yeah. Right. I had, I had a friend who literally just went to a concert last or a couple weeks ago before he started having before he had a couple surgeries. He was he we were on uh sorry. We were on chat talking to each other and he was like, Yeah, I just got back from a King Country concert. I was like, Oh, that's cool. I didn't say anything. I'm just like, Yeah, that's cool. It's a concert. Yeah. I'm not gonna admonish him for going to a concert. Yeah. They're phenomenal musicians and a lot of their songs do point to that but a lot of that one didn't really don't that one didn't that one yeah. didn't that one did not and that's that's the danger yeah. that's where the danger comes in yeah and that's the number one song on caleb right now <laughs> yeah. yeah relate yeah and the other thing is people think they're getting fed through them speakers right yeah i can tell y'all got something over there we did <laughs> well yeah i mean Brewing. well just for well, just while you're pulling that up whatever you got what about people that would be brothers in christ and sisters in Christ that go to churches that sing these type songs, I fear that nobody wants to change because once you change the music, you change the whole culture in the church, yep. and you the run the risk of losing a lot of people. Yeah. And then there's others that may just disagree with us outright. That's fine. Yeah. We've said on here every episode, I think, that it's we're okay being disagreed with. Yeah. Sure. We don't mind that at all. We'll lovingly talk through issues uh, any day of the week, but... Uh, yeah, I'm afraid that some of these catchy songs would start to minimize congregation numbers, but I'm encouraged. There's a uh, um, research that's coming out that says the younger people, they want solid biblical teaching. They're tired of fluffy and 7-Eleven songs. Praise God. They want truth. Uh, we were even saw in a text message yesterday that there's people in northeast Arkansas. You know, they're, they're just tired of the fluff they want true biblical stuff i think yeah a little bit of that there's proof in the in the pudding here because we've seen growth oh, over man. the last couple of years after yeah. we've made these changes and and we've been we, very specific about what we sing and things like and you know what people come in it's it's not that they're looking for a um, a song service that was just you know blow your mind it was it was wow that song that we sang was so rich yeah and it's in its you know theology and and, yeah. and it just i was surprised by that or, or we're that's what yeah. we that's what we're hearing now but we're seeing growth and we're seeing growth in a lot of young people uh we're seeing you know we're seeing a lot and it's because people are being fed and yeah. people are just literally starving well and, another yeah. thing i hear a lot from people that are coming in it's like y'all leave the lights on during the singing i love that yeah, yeah. it's like <laughs> yeah because it's the same concert it's not yeah we want to we want to see and hear each other sing together that's encouraging yeah this is not a pat on the back for us either right it, it sounds right. like another pat. On, it's not it's oh, not no. a pat on the back this is all due to god this has God's nothing grace to do with alone us. because yeah. i am a wretched sinner and i recognize my failures and shortcomings and i hate them uh, but this is all a God thing. Uh, when I mean, we've even tore down the curtain, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. adding seats. I mean, people are coming because the truth is going out. And I know Zach Davis's church in Mark Tree. And if you're anywhere near Mark Tree, look up Zach Davis and and the church there. What's the name of it? Oh, I don't know. First, first Baptist first, Mark, yeah, first Mark Tree. Yeah, yeah, first, first, Mark man, Tree. first. Uh, I've heard that man. He just had an influx of people coming because Zach Davis preaches truth. Absolutely, uh, yeah. they sing truth there. Uh, yeah. So if you're that's anywhere true. near there, you you go by there. You're going to have a biblical church yeah. there. Uh, yeah. But that's the thing is a lot of these biblical churches that are were once looked at as um, kind of like the redheaded stepchild, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> <laughs> 
they were looked at the, like a redheaded stepchild. People are now going to those. Yeah. They're yeah. Flo- they're starting to flock to these churches that are biblical, and not just the the preaching content from beginning to end. Yeah. yeah. Right. So we're starting to see those churches grow. It's because so people are tired of fake. We get enough fake in our lives from every other source in the world, from news, from Gosh, people that we turn on the TV, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Instagram. No, turn, just yeah. yeah, we get so much fake. We just want a little bit of truth in our life, and the little bit of truth that we do get is from well, that. Nah, it's not even a little bit of truth; it's a lot of bit of truth. Yeah, uh, from scripture. But we don't need fake from Sunday mornings. We don't, and. I think that's what really people are getting fed up with is the fakeness, or at least how fake it feels. Well, they're going home empty. Yeah. You know, it, isn't that it, what Chandler said that last was, week? That's yeah. exactly what Chandler he, talked he would about. leave empty. Yeah. yeah. And it's so, it's so sad, man. It's heartbreaking um, that millions and millions of dollars go into productions that, that don't feed anybody. the congregation yeah. anything. There, there's, there's two sides of that problem, too, uh, that, that I want to point out. One, is the place serving meat and potatoes or are they serving fluff? Yeah. Are you eating? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's two sides to that. Yeah, I, yeah. I just want to make you, sure that we're fluff? pointing out. It's, Absolutely. It's, you, it, it goes – There's both sides of that equation have yeah. to be in the, in the right the place. The church though. can only spoon feed you for so long. All, Correct. Yeah. <laughs> and no matter how much truth is preached and is sung, if you're not eating it, yeah, yeah. You're not getting right. nourished. You got to yeah. be disciplined. Hey, don't people have a saying for that? Read your, Read Bible. your Bible. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first time you've used that on the podcast, isn't it? Second, we maybe. Second, second, uh, yeah. second today. Yeah, second, second today, today. Which I think wow. is the only time you said it on the podcast. Well, Matt, what'd you have pulled up over there as we begin to wind down? <sighs> well, there's so much we haven't even talked about. You, you know, mean we've got 30 minutes? We left? haven't even talked about like, <laughs> like styles of music, you know? So, um, I, I, before he does that, I want to lead into with what he looked up first. Before he got to where he's at now, he looked up songs about God. On Google, just look that up. So, if anyone's new into this, they may look this up. That's exactly the Google search that people will type in. Exactly. And, and here's the thing, right? What's so, the second one you found? Hold on. So, I'm just going to give you the title, and you tell me what you think of it right off the bat, and give us an idea of who you think wrote it. Are we playing a game here? We're about to play yeah. a game. Uh, okay. So it's, it's kind of a game. So he's going to read the title, but also say who you think wrote the song or sings the song. The song title is "By the Grace of God." Def Leppard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's the answer. But that's not the answer. By the grace of God, Big Daddy Weave. Nope. Keith Urban. Nope. Keith Urban. <laughs> I, I have listen, Cody Johnson. Agree. Listen, that guess right See, there was just as good as any other guess. Yeah. I'll tell you that. Because hold on, Joe, you are so excited about. I this. know Come because on. it's Joe's, because as Joe looks over his shoulder and sees the yeah. answers. That's not fair. Well, well yeah, it's because I'm sitting here looking at the answer. My <laughs> real like, guess it gets me fired up because the name of the song with who wrote it and some of the lyrics. It, it makes me mad. I will tell you. It upsets me. The genres it is labeled under is pop and Christian. Oh man, Carrie Underwood. No. You're not far off. You're you're, not, you're getting no. a lot closer. Kelly Clarkson. Taylor Swift. You're you're getting closer, but I'm telling you, you guys it, won't guess. Oh, it. hold on. Is it Ariana Grande? No. Now you're, you're the closest way now. closer now. Oh wow. You're so much closer. It's someone no. in that genre. It's someone in that. Like, Katy surround. Perry. Yes. Katy Perry oh, is oh, it? Oh yeah, yeah. From 2013. Wow. Oh, Her really? daddy was a preacher. Yeah. yeah, it was. Well, she lost some of the message. I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I didn't, um, I didn't even notice. She this. wasn't eating. Oh, wait, never mind. No, she wasn't eating. She didn't bring her own fork. <laughs> do, do you want me to read? Feeding? Do you want me to read some of the lyrics? I don't know. I'm scared. I'm, I'm <laughs> so if you look at song, songs about God, this is the first one. This is the second. This one. is one of the yeah, top one of the songs top to ones. come. What was the first one? Well, there, it's in a weird order. Yeah, it's unanswered prayers it's by, by Garth, Garth Brooks. Brooks. What? There you go. And then the second one is by the grace of God. If you and go then from, counting blue cars by Dish Walla. Oh, just right. the other night. Seriously, yeah. that makes the top yeah. list. Hometown yeah. football game. Tell me all your thoughts on God. I'd really like I'd to meet really her. like to meet her. Yeah, that's oh. that's one of the top. Oh, that's one wow! Of the, well, now go. Who would you like to meet? Her. That, that's her. In the song. That's what the, oh, that, That's goodness. one. That's one on the list. Yeah, Tell I'd really like to meet her. All your thoughts on that. And you, are was you, that it? Are you using? Yeah, are you using her. Google? Yeah, Google. Well, that's the 
leftist platform there for you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to get political, but it is what it is. Oh, yeah, right? that is. That's what, 95, 96? What do you use, like DuckDuckGo? Duck, I was going to say, if I went to DuckDuckGo, <laughs> do you think it'd be better? <laughs> you want to try that game? Do it. <laughs> okay. okay. Everybody's done. But hold us. on. I didn't even get to read the lyrics to yeah, that. Oh, go. Right? Oh, man. So Do we need to? We, <laughs> do we, we should want talk to about the point. grace of God. But see if the grace of God is in this song. By the grace of God, there was no other way. I picked myself back up. I knew I had to stay. I put one foot in front of the other, and I looked in the mirror and decided to stay. Wasn't going to let love take me out that way. So I'm guessing she's probably talking about suicide. I'm confused. Right? Or I'm very not. not uh, by the grace of God, yet she picked herself up. Yeah, yeah. That it, that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. She does thank her sister for keeping my head above the water. Yeah, when the truth was like swallowing sand. Mm. I know I am enough. And then she Possible affirms the real that truth is like swallowing. She says, blades. "I know I am enough. Possible to be loved. It was not about me." Mm, kind of seems like well, it that, was. Hold on, it's not about you. That part's right. So it is. It says, "Now I have to be. Now have I have to rise, to rise above. above. Let the universe call the bluff." Yeah, the truth will set you free. Oh yeah, the truth is. Mm. All right. Let's, People are uh, singing this stuff and they think it's true. Yes. That's the this issue. That's, 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 that's it. They don't know what truth is. And, oh, man, let it be our prayer that they will find this truth. But sadly, and that it will set them free. That's labeled as Christian. Yeah. Yeah. And if you have no resources, true resources, well, it, where it, are you going to go? It goes all the way up the chain, you know, to the ownership of these radio stations. They don't vet this stuff. Maybe they don't know what the truth is, you know, and it's really, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. It, it does come down to money a lot of the times yeah, that's and they it. become performers. Mm. And so duck, duck go doesn't do like Google and give you a list right no. at the top. However, it does link a bunch of YouTube videos and it is the top songs about God collection to top 200 praise and worship. So we're getting closer a- possibly. It's like a two-hour-long video. Yeah, we're not watching that. No. Go to that first link. (laughs) So while everybody's tuning out now. (laughs) Great radio, guys. (laughs) Let's kind of bring this back. So as we land this plane for real, uh, I know there's a lot that we could talk about still. I think that we need to take away some application here. Whatever church you go to, I think people need to listen to the music Listen to the lyrics, not necessarily the music, but make sure the music is not trying to be overproduced and trying to be, yeah. you know, it, it's it's good to promote excellence and try and do our best for the glory of God, but that can sometimes lead to big yeah. productions and trying to overdo things. But listen to the songs. If if it is me centered constantly, then there's a problem. If there's no uh, glorification of God in it whatsoever, then there's a problem. If it's, uh, there's no gospel in it, if it doesn't tell us how bad men, men are and how we're lost without him and, and the grace of God, then there's issues. Mm-hmm. And listen to where these are coming from. Uh, if you know them to be coming from some of these things, question your leadership. Don't, I'm not saying you leave your church. I'm not saying any of that, but I would really sit down and study and think through these things and then talk to the leadership and ask them why they choose to sing these songs Mm -hmm. or allow their worship leaders or music leaders, whatever they want to call them, to sing these songs and just get their take on it. Because I know there's a lot of people that are different. I know we've got good brothers and sisters in the Lord that go to churches where they sing these things. And and there's a lot of people, unfortunately, that'll that'll sit in church and, well, I'm not a church leader, and they won't question, you know, when there's something that they, they don't, think is right they, they don't want to question it because well the, that's the leadership or whatever question your leaders yeah because you know what the they boat. may just have not thought about it or they may be sitting there going man i'd really like to change this stuff up but i'm just worried and if they have two or three people come in and say hey look i don't think this is biblical this song we need to change this up they, they may be like yes people are getting it and they you know you may start right. something in your church that'd be great yeah, yeah. but People are are scared. Don't be scared of your church leaders. Yeah, if, question, if, if they right. bite your head off because of it, then you really need to question the then church you, that you're yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Right. you know some some uh, you know I think it's healthy to point out some church members have been conditioned not to rock the boat. True. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and that's that's a very sad situation as well. Yeah, you're so, right. 
Yeah, you know, questioning is not a bad thing. No. Somehow it got all. a negative connotation along the way, and it's not a bad thing. Now, you better question Hold in the right account. manner. Yeah. Yeah. Don't come up and say, hey, why are we doing this? Yeah. But yeah. you, know, you but, better have, I mean, you need to have scriptural yeah. reasons. No. I have a biblical reason for you approaching the leadership. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, can I take a nap? That's a, <laughs> that's a good one. Is that your prune juice on the table? It is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Going on a cleanse. Man, I hope this was helpful. Yeah. I, I think it was. Uh, I hope people don't think we're just a bunch of jerks that want to criticize their music. But I think I'll say this, and these will be my final thoughts. I think a lot of times people may know the truth and want to do something about it, but traditions, it's kind of comfort. Yeah. Right. And and like last week's episode, deconstructing traditions. I think we need to do that in our music too. It's yeah. uncomfortable to change sometimes. It's uncomfortable to leave some of these things that have been so dear to our heart, so close to us for years, and to really come to a biblical style of music and lyrics. Uh, our church went through that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We did. There were people like, man, I do not like these songs. I can't. Now we sing these same songs that people said they didn't like before. And, love them. and this this place is full of voices singing loudly yep. to the Lord. It's a beautiful thing. So yeah. there's patience. Uh, it is going to be a shock at it first. Takes time. But I would rather I'd rather have a shock to my system and be biblical than be stuck somewhere that I, I I don't really need to be just because it's comforting. Growth yeah. occurs when we get a little uncomfortable sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we should say that we're not bashing people that listen to some of these different types yeah. of music. Right. No. You know, I like Led Zeppelin and ACDC, but I also know that we're not playing Stairway to Heaven and Highway to Hell in church on Sunday, too. That's if true. you were at New Spring Church years ago, you would have. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. New Spring Church, Highway to Hell on Easter Sunday. Wow. That's what they open with. Yeah. Yeah. What'd they close with? <laughs> Stairway to heaven. <laughs> Stairway to heaven. <laughs> I don't know wow. what they close with. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's not really, that's not the place for it, guys. No. I think, I think the biggest message people can take away is take this seriously. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's because, I mean, our, <laughs> what goes in our ears goes to our head, and what goes from, what, what's in our head goes to our heart. Like, exactly. That, that method of movement. It's what music does. It goes from our ears to our head. That's why it's stuck in our head, and that moves to our heart. And what comes out of our heart, our yeah, eventually comes out of our hands and our mouth. If the music you listen to interferes with your worship of God and what you think of God, then there's a problem. Yeah. If you don't have that spiritual maturity to listen to that type of stuff, then you don't need to listen to it. Yeah. Take it seriously. No. What did you say, Ryan? Can Just take now. a nap? No, not then. That's you, what you're saying. Take it seriously. Take, all yes, take it seriously. seriously. Take it seriously, yes. I think that's a great way to close this out is take it seriously. Take it seriously. Yep. Leave us a comment. If you enjoyed this, if you've got a subject you want us to talk about on the podcast, leave a comment in the comment section and uh, we'll, we'll dive in at some point on all these things. we got a lot of ideas, but uh, we definitely could use some more. Yeah. And if you hated this and want to tell us we're a bunch of idiots, please feel free to do that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can comment that or email us. We're but we're not in this to fight. Nope. So uh, we, won't we fight. will definitely talk to it lovingly, peacefully. Yep. And as always, repent and believe the gospel. That's right. Mm-hmm. Believe. <laughs>